In today's video, I'm going to take a look at the law in Ireland surrounding drink driving. So it's February 2017. In fact, it's St. Valentine's Day. So let's take a look now. Okay, let's take a look then. Road traffic law in Ireland is a very, very technical area of law. And to the layperson, what appears to be a slam dunk of a case in terms of maybe a drink driving prosecution, it looks like a no-hoper um, to a layperson that may well be the case. However, cases are not straightforward because the prosecution, the state, has an evidential burden to discharge. They also have the burden of proof to discharge. In other words, they must prove beyond a reasonable doubt because it's a criminal prosecution that the accused person is guilty of the offence and uh, so on. So there is an evidential burden as well, so that would involve the lawful arrest, if that's the circumstance of the person, the taking of the specimens or samples and so on and so forth. There's big changes then in the last few years thanks to various pieces of legislation, particularly the Road Traffic Act of 2010 and the Road Traffic Number 2 Act of 2011. Road Traffic Act of 2014 also has made some changes. One of the features of the um, new law is that there is now a person or a beast called a specified person. A specified person can fall into any number of categories. However, it's the holder of a learner permit or a person who holds his or her first driving licence for a period not exceeding two years. Uh, it's the holder of a driving licence of particular categories or it's the holder of a person who has a license to drive a public service vehicle, or it's the person who does not hold a license for the previous five years. And then there's further people who are described as specified persons under Section 8. The bottom line is that there's slightly different rules, slightly different laws for specified persons and experienced drivers or non-specified persons. That's something you need to be aware of. Drink driving then was uh, set out in the Road Traffic Act of 1961, I think it was. Now it's in Section 4 of the Road Traffic Act of 2010. So basically there's two uh, particular uh, bars to it or two arms to a road traffic or a drink driving offence under Section 4. One is a person uh, shall not drive or attempt to drive a mechanically propelled vehicle in a public place whilst <clears throat> under the influence of an intoxicant to the point that they're incapable of... Um, controlling the vehicle or driving it, having proper control. The second category then is a person who um, has a particular concentration of alcohol in his or her blood. If it exceeds the permitted concentration, well then they're guilty of this offence. The penalty for drink driving in Ireland now, if it's a summary conviction that is prosecuted in the district court, then it's a fine not exceeding 5,000 and or imprisonment for six months or uh, to both um, not exceeding six months so you could get uh, you could get jail obviously if it's a first offense that's unlikely to happen but there's no guarantees it just depends on the particular circumstances but they're the they're the uh, prosecution or the penalties rather in the district court circuit court if it's prosecuted on indictment there may well be uh, a fatality or some, something um, you know a more serious accident or a more serious offence so that may well go to the circuit court if that's the case then these penalties don't apply there would be larger penalties <coughs> so drunken charge then is another offence um, common offence for prosecution in the whole area of drink driving it's under section 5 of the road traffic act and basically it uh, sets out that it's uh, an offence for a person uh, to be in charge of a mechanically propelled vehicle so they may not be driving it they may just be in charge of it in a public place they may be sitting in the uh, driver's seat or indeed the passenger seat with the keys in or out of the ignition and so on but basically again uh, it's an offence for a person to be drunk in charge of a vehicle and there's two arms to this particular section as well one is to the extent that the person is incapable of having proper control of the vehicle even though they're not driving uh, or the other arm is the question of limits, the concentration of alcohol in the blood. So we'll have a look now at the limits in just a minute. Here's the alcohol limits nowadays then uh, in 2017. It's 50 milligrams of alcohol per 100 milliliters of blood. However, 
if you're a specified person that drops to 20 milligrams likewise in relation to urine it's 67 milligrams of alcohol per 100 milliliters of urine however for a specified person it's reduced and again it's smaller again for breath 22 micrograms of alcohol per 100 milliliters of breath and for a specified person that drops down again there's now a fixed penalty notices then in relation to um, in relation to drink driving offences and it will depend on the amount of alcohol in your blood and it will also depend on whether the, whether you are an experienced driver or not so it depends on 80 milligrams of alcohol not exceeding that um, per 100 milliliters of blood not exceeding 107 milligrams of alcohol per 100 milliliters of urine or 35 milligrams of alcohol per 100 milliliters of breath in those circumstances if you're an experienced driver there's a 200 euro fixed penalty notice and three penalty points if you're a fixed penalty uh, or if you're an experienced driver and you exceed 80 milligrams but don't exceed 100 milligrams or exceed 107 milligrams but not 135 in other words there's a ban there uh, you know which is slightly more serious than the previous one that i looked at but um, once you're in that band, then you have a 400 euro fixed penalty notice and six months disqualification. We go on then to the penalties for drunk in charge. They are the same as the penalties for drink driving. That's presuming that the prosecution takes place in the district court. So a fine not exceeding 5,000 euros and or a term of imprisonment not exceeding six months. Fixed penalty notices then for other drivers, that is, drivers who are not uh, experienced drivers within the uh, definition of the legislation. There's the limits, you can see them on the screen. There's 200 penalty, 200 euro fixed penalty notice and three months disqualification. Um, the Section 9 of the Road Traffic Act then sets out the obligation to provide a preliminary breath, breath specimen and this importantly is where a member of the Garda Síochána is of the opinion that you have consumed intoxicating liquor etc etc so in this particular case and this comes back to the evidential burden on the state or on the prosecution the Garda must form an opinion so the Garda would always be asked to um, as, as to why or how he formed that opinion that's an important evidential proof Section 10 of the Road Traffic Act sets out mandatory breath testing. This involves the setting up of authorised checkpoints. Again, there's a technical aspect to this. The authorisation must specify the public place where the checkpoint will be set up and the authorisation must be uh, provided or signed off on by uh, a proper or the uh, an authorised person, a person who's capable of giving the authorisation. Again, if these legal evidential requirements are not complied with, it's possible that the case will fail. <coughs> the section 11 of the road traffic act 2010 sets out then a preliminary impairment testing so this is uh, to allow a Garda Síochána uh, to form an opinion uh, that a person is under uh, the influence of an intoxicant um, and if in order to form that opinion he needs to carry out this preliminary uh, impairment testing section 11 allows this and this would include not just for alcohol but for the, the use of drugs as well section 12 then it uh, sets out an obligation to provide a specimen of breath blood or urine after arrest again the arrest must be lawful in other words if it's not a lawful arrest well then the specimen that's obtained uh, may be or will almost certainly be inadmissible and thrown out so again you know these are the technicalities that a lawyer who is experienced in this area and knows his or her stuff in relation to drink driving and the proofs we'll be looking at. They're also then provided in section 22 of the Road Traffic Act of 2010 a defence. It's a defence to refusal to provide a specimen of blood or two specimens of breath. You need a special and substantial reason and you also need to comply with a requirement um, to taking a specimen to the taking of a specimen of blood or the provision of a specimen of urine as soon as practicable after the refusal or failure so that's you know it's a limited enough defense there's also a provision now for giving a sample in the hospital section 14 of the act sets this out 
in conclusion I would recommend or I would advise you that this is a technical area of law what appears to be a very straightforward case may not be so when scrutinized by an experienced lawyer who does a quite a bit of road traffic law and drink driving in particular the prosecution has to discharge a burden of proof that is the criminal standard beyond a reasonable doubt and the prosecution also has an evidential burden if the case is proved there's a mandatory disqualification the court has no discretion depending on the concentration of alcohol in the blood the court has discretion obviously in relation to the fine and the whether to impose impose a prison sentence or not my name is Terry Gorry, I'm a solicitor in Enfield. I hope you find this useful. If you do, you might give it a thumbs up down below and subscribe perhaps to my YouTube channel. I have a lot of information or a lot of videos completely free on YouTube covering all aspects of law in Ireland.